everyone. Welcome to the No Fear Sock Knitting class online. My name is Denise and this is class three. Whoa! <laughs> Today we are going to be covering the leg of the sock and reading patterns as well as a couple of other things. Uh, I know many of you are waiting for, just let me cover this right up front, I know many of you are waiting for the heel and heel instructions, um, but that is a very involved topic and I've decided to split that up into two classes and I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. Um, so how's it going everybody? How are your socks? Oh my gosh, I am seeing socks on Instagram and it is making me so, so, so happy. I, I, I just can't even believe it. You guys are knitting and there's so much excitement, there's so much joy. I, I, my heart is bursting. You have no idea how happy I am. Um, if I sound a little bit uh, my voice sounds a little hoarse-ish today or a little bit off. Um, I have not been feeling well the last couple of days, so I do apologize if I sound a little um, hoarse and scratchy today, but I was determined to still get class six, um, sorry, class three up on Saturday. So this class is going to be a little bit shorter. Like I said, I'll talk about the heel in just a little bit, but I just wanted to go over the pattern for this class, for this class has now been released. gosh I can't even begin to tell you how excited and freaked out and thrilled and terrified I was to finally hit the publish button on this but the no fear shorty socks pattern is now available it is on Ravelry and I know a lot of you have asked about um, I'm jumping all over the place already. I, I always have a script for myself and then don't follow it. <laughs> but at least I'm covering the topics on it, so it's okay. Um, a lot of you have been asking uh, if I'm going to have this platform, um, have the pattern available on another platform for those of you that are not on Ravelry. Um, the answer is yes, I will. I'm not quite sure yet which one. It will either be Etsy or Shopify. Uh, but again, I will let everybody know um, on Instagram as well as here in an upcoming episode um, going forward. Another thing too, for people that are not on Instagram and only here on YouTube, please check back um, in, the, in the current episode. So this is episode three or class three. If I have any updates going on or any other announcements, smaller announcements, not anything as large as um, project bags or anything like that being released, but um, if there's any smaller announcements, I will update the description box down below for you. So check in with that at least once a week uh, just to see if there have been any updates. Um, again, I'm, there really isn't any other way to get the information to you. Um, if you're not on Instagram and there is no pressure let me just say that right now there is absolutely no pressure for anybody to join I totally understand and respect your wishes to um, avoid that platform if that doesn't suit you um, but again I will try to keep you as updated as possible in the description box down below <sighs> So back to the pattern, the pattern's out. People are following the pattern. That makes me so, so happy. I did wanna cover one or two things about the pattern though, um, and we'll get to those in just a bit. So today's class is going to cover, um, we're basically going to cover knitting the leg of the sock, which if you've been doing it already is sort of self-explanatory, but I will talk about that a bit. Adjusting the length of the sock. Uh, I did get a question from someone, a couple of questions from people about wanting a full length sock instead of a shorty. So we'll cover that in just a bit. And also, like I said, going over the pattern, reading patterns. Um, yeah, because I think that's kind of important. Just one or two little notes on that. Uh, this is not going to be a long episode. Um, I'm not demonstrating anything in this class. Um, I did get a comment from someone and I just want to address it here. I probably should have just let it go, but it really, really bugged me. Um, if this person left me a message and <laughs> at first I didn't laugh, but then going after a couple of minutes, I was able to actually after about 24 hours, I was able to laugh at it. Uh, but they left me a message that said, um, ah, 12 minutes. No, ah, thank you. 12 minutes of jibber jabber. Um, and then you finally get to get to the good stuff. Like, Gosh, 
but 12 minutes like they were so irritated and then they actually put at the end I'm impatient with the little smiley face um yeah they were a little impatient that I was just jabbering on but there is information in the jabber and honestly you guys if this class is going at too slow of a rate or you're not getting to the information that you want to quick enough I'm, I'm doing this slowly the class is geared for beginners there are many of you that are not beginners that are watching in order to gain um, additional information to enhance your sock knitting knowledge and I so appreciate that you have absolutely no idea I mean I the response to this has just been overwhelming and I'm, I'm thrilled but I don't want to hold anyone back or waste anyone's time so there are other tutorials I've said this more than once already there are other tutorials if you're interested this just may not be the class for you so yes just wanted to say that I do talk a lot that's the nature of my podcast that's the nature of this class if it doesn't suit you okay so now that I've covered that I just had to say that um, because it bugged me it bugged me a lot I'm okay let's not talk about it anymore <laughs> I'm done. So yes, patterns out. It is a shorty sock pattern. 15 uh, rounds on the 15 rounds on the cuff, 15 rounds on the leg. So now how do you adjust that? Someone actually also asked me a question about measuring. They said that they wanted, can I possibly give instructions in inches as opposed to rounds because they want to blissfully knit along? And and I get that which is one of the reasons I love stockinette socks so much. I don't have to think, I don't have to do anything, I can just knit on and on and on happily. Um, but the difference between measuring the leg of your sock and counting your rounds, I talked about this at length in my sock talk videos and I do recommend, um, for those of you that do want to just jump ahead and get to the heel, um, I did demonstrate a heel flapping gusset on two circular needles in sock talk one um yeah part one uh i gave a background of information and then in the in there is a tutorial on how to do that there isn't one yet for magic loop which i will do here and i'm also going to do two circular needles here as well so stay tuned for that but if you if you're motoring along and you want to keep going you can go back and reference that and i'll link that uh in the description box down below for you but again, measuring versus counting, in my experience and in teaching for many, many years, I find when a student lays their knitting down on a table, I'm going to put my hands up here so you can see, when they lay their hands down on a table and they hold it with a tape measure, they've got the tape measure at the top and they move down to the end mark where they want to measure. And some people pull they stretch, they contort a little bit, um, they're making little adjustments, that is not an accurate measurement. You're not going to get an accurate measurement that way. Um, also, and this may sound really crazy, but it is very true, the weather, time, your hands, circumstance, all of these things affect your knitting. They affect the wool as you're knitting. If you're working on a pair of socks and you start the pair in January and they get put in the in the hibernation pile and you don't pick them up again until May or June winter spring cold warm when you go to pick up that sock if you're only measuring in that first sock let's say you finish the first one that first sock measures five inches on the leg and you go to start knitting and you're like okay well I'm gonna measure my second one I've, I've knit the leg and I measure and it's five inches and you keep going and you finish your pair of socks and they don't match wool shrinks it contracts a little bit in colder weather and it expands a little bit with humidity in warmer weather so what you've measured in the winter is not what you're measuring even though it's the same yarn same size needles <clears throat> it can change that's why I recommend counting is it more work for you yes will you have a pair of socks that you really love and will fit better yes you will I recommended using progress keepers Progress Keeper is exactly what it sounds like. It marks your progress on the sock. So what you do is you knit 10, knit 10 or 15 or 20 rounds, 
put your progress keeper in place. Knit another 20 and you count, one, two, three, four, you only have to count 20, move your progress keeper with you as you go. That way you don't have to start from scratch and keep counting from zero to 60, zero to 10, zero to 20, zero to 30. You just can count in smaller increments. Your sock, your socks are guaranteed to be the same size. So that is my, those are my thoughts on measuring versus counting. Um, yes, so if you want to lengthen your sock, by all means, keep knitting. Um, it's really, really, it's not much more complicated than that. It's very simple. Just keep knitting. If you want to do a knee high, that's a little bit different. That's a whole other conversation because then you need to increase the size of your leg. But if you're just knitting a standard full length sock, the length can be anywhere from four inches to maybe eight inches long. Just keep knitting. And with both of these techniques with the two circular needles and with the magic loop, you can try it on. You can absolutely try the sock on and when it's the length you want, then you're ready to start working on the heel. And many of you have already started the heel. Someone just posted a picture of uh, their finished shorties. Oh. <laughs> just, again, I'm beaming. I'm absolutely beaming. I'm so excited. So just keep knitting. and. Also, another point on the leg of your sock, if you decide that you want to add a little bit of texture, or if you have a pattern, a full length pattern, for example, a blueberry waffle pattern, or um, I can't think now, that's the first one, or Hermione's uh, Everyday Socks, those two um, are the first ones to come to mind. I think they're both free patterns on Ravelry. Um, those, if you wanted to make convert those patterns to a shorty sock, or use the pattern that's in the pattern that's in those patterns in this pattern because it's basically a certain number of rounds and stitches that are repeated. You can absolutely plug that in here. Uh, as long as the numbers are working, you can go ahead and plug that in. If you want to try a garter stitch sock, you can do ribbing and then start knitting in garter stitch, which is knitting around and purling around. Um, if you want to try a seed stitch, you can do that. You could do a moss stitch. You could throw in a cable. As long as your numbers are multiples, of the size sock that you are knitting, I'll say that again, as long as the multiple, so if you have a stitch pattern that's over four stitches, as long as that four stitches fits into whether you're knitting a small, medium, or large, so 56, 64, or 72 stitches, then absolutely, by all means, throw the pattern in there, have at it, have fun. That is basically adding texture, adding cables. If you want to add um, adding patterns or stitch patterns. If you want to add a cable, that's a little bit different because cables eat more yarn. And by that, I mean they require more yarn within the stitches because you're moving stitches back and forth. So the fabric you're creating draws in a lot more. So that, then, again, that's another conversation or another separate topic if you want to add cables because you do have to adjust your stitch count um, to accommodate the, the shrinkage in the fabric. So that basically covers um, adding texture and things. You can also do a reverse stockinette. You can do your ribbing and then just either turn your sock inside out and knit, um, knit on the inside so that the outside of your sock is uh, just all purl stitches or you can just um, purl on the outside and you will still get that same effect. So there is a lot of wiggle room. This pattern is called a pattern, but it's also a recipe. You can cut and paste whatever you want in this. And right now I'm trying to decide, I probably will do it, um, release another version of this pattern with a short row heel. Uh, that is really what I like to do. I think it would be easier or update this pattern um, to have instructions for a heel flap as well as a short row. Not quite sure yet what I'm going to do there, uh, but you will definitely get um, short row heel instructions when we get up to that. So that covers that. In terms of the pattern, um, let's talk about where we are right now within the pattern, if you are following along. So last week, you know what, let me show you the one I've updated. So I'm working on, my samples are, I have a two circular sample and a magic loop sample. And this, because I was a little off this week, I didn't finish my two circular sample, but I did my magic loop. Okay, confession time. I'm coming clean, making a confession. 
I have never been a fan of Magic Loop. I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've said that multiple times. However, now that I'm actually, oh wait, I have a little knot. Now that I'm doing it to teach, I am enjoying it, you guys. Oh, I really am enjoying it. There's, once you find your rhythm, and I think many of us don't like change. I'm not a giant fan of change at all. If you talk to my sister in particular, she's like, wow, you were eating that in college and you're still eating that now? 30 years later, yes, yes I am, because I'm familiar and it makes me happy. <laughs> so I've started knitting in the round on two circular needles. That That is just what I started on and it made sense, it completely clicked in my brain. Half on one needle, half, on, half the stitches on one needle, half on the other, and it's just what I've always done. I've done this with sweaters, um, with the sleeves on a sweater, bodies of sweaters, hats, gloves, everything I've done in the round, I do it on two circular needles. But now that I've tried this and I'm getting a rhythm and figuring out how to maneuver the cable and to avoid the ladders and everything, I really like this. I really, really, really do like it a lot. I'm not gonna run out and buy a whole set of you know, 32 or 40 inch needles um, to add to my stash, but I, I definitely like this. And I ordered, these are Addy Rockets, and I ordered a set of High High Sharps on the 40 inch. Um, actually, 32, and I have a, I just ordered another um, 40 inch cable in the Addy Rocket, so I have another pair to do a regular pair of socks for myself. So, I love it, guys. I love it. And another confession. Here is the sock that we're making. Here it is. So I've got the pair done, just so you can see them. And these um, sock blockers, I believe they're Bryson by Bryson, B-R-Y-S-O-N. I will add that to the description box down below. And you can find these, um, I want to say the Loopy Hue has sock blockers like this. I know Jim Bean, Jimmy Bean Wool, or Jim Bean's Wool, they have them as well. So I will put a link uh, for you down below for these. Um, but the heel flap and gusset, fun. I stopped knitting it a really long time ago just because I wanted something faster to knit. And then I found the Fish Lips Kiss Heel and fell in love with that, like really fell hard in love with it. And it's really the only heel I've done for years now. But now that I've returned to this and I've had to do it slowly in order to teach it and really break it down, there's a magic in this heel. It, it's, I've said this before too, the yarn harlot, Stephanie Pearl McPhee says that turning a heel makes you feel smart and it really does. It really, really does that you're, you're, you've made, you've created this three dimensional thing out of sticks and string. I mean, that's, does that blow anyone else's mind besides mine? Oh my gosh. So yes, I am absolutely having fun with this, um, with this heel, using the magic loop. If you had told me that, I would have said that a month ago, even a, a year ago, even a month ago, I would have said absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. So you know what, old dog, new tricks, it can be done. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and one other thing I wanted to cover, um, just going over notes, we talked about other platforms, um, measuring. So for this pattern and for sock patterns in general, they are written, most patterns just give you instructions and numbers to knit your socks. They're not giving you instructions for a specific way to knit your socks. Um, that is where a class like this comes in handy or other classes on YouTube. You can look up how to apply this and can this pattern be applied to, well, what I'm trying to say is this pattern can be applied to any technique, whether you're using magic loop, two circular needles, which is what we're doing. You can apply this to um, a nine inch needle. You can also apply it to double pointed needles. Whatever method is working for you, you can absolutely, if, if you're looking for a pretty basic shorty pattern, um, yes, this is this will work for you no matter what technique that you're using. So, um, and then just general instructions. Um, I strongly suggest reading through the pattern. And one of the first things um, 
I said that the pattern was an accompaniment to this class. Uh, one of the other points that I stressed, um, and the reason I said that is because I will reference the pattern throughout this class uh, in terms of the numbers and instructions, etc. Um, but one thing, once the instructions start, which is on page three, the right up here at the top, I have a little tip and it says, um, highlight the numbers that apply to the size you are knitting throughout the pattern to avoid any confusion. I always say, ask me how I know, <laughs> because you're knitting the medium size, which is 64 stitches. And all of a sudden you've got, wait a second, like, why do I suddenly have eight? more stitches than I'm supposed to. Something's wrong here. It, it's very easy for your eye to lose its place within the pattern. So that's why I say to highlight as you go along. Um, read the pattern carefully. For example, in the heel flap instructions, um, row one says uh, slip one stitch, slip one purl wise, comma, there is an asterisk, there's a parentheses, knit one, slip one knit wise, close parentheses, repeat from the asterisk to the last stitch, knit one. Okay, I've had a lot of people knit it this way. They'll slip one, then they'll knit one, slip one knit wise, and then go back and slip one purl wise, then knit one, knit one, slip one knit wise. So they're repeating from the beginning, not from where the, the asterisk is. Am I saying that right? I think I am. Uh, I've always had trouble with that word. So read your patterns carefully, you guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Read your patterns carefully. This particular pattern does not have a chart. Um, I once I there is another pattern in the works right now that will have a chart. So understanding how to read charts, and we'll go over that a little bit too, once that pattern is released. But in the meantime, really, like I said, I can't stress this enough to read it through carefully go back and read. Um, if you're having trouble, chances are somebody else might have had trouble and there may actually be a mistake in the pattern. So go back to the page, um, to the pattern page on Ravelry. There may be an errata page, which is um, the corrections for the pattern. So all of these things. Talk to people on forums for the pattern. Uh, if the designer has, <coughs> excuse me, if the designer has a Ravelry group, you can go in. Um, they may have a thread discussing a particular pattern. I'm going to open a Ravelry thread, um, a thread in my Ravelry group for this pattern. Um, I'm going to link the pattern there for people and you all can talk amongst yourselves there if you have questions. I think it's easier. There was such a sense of camaraderie in my Ravelry group last year when we did the No Fear Sock Knitting Cal. Everyone was helping one another, um, figuring things out together, making references for people. Uh, someone just posted today that they are having trouble with um, the long tail cast on, doing it with one hand, the way that I demonstrated. Uh, there is a way to do a long tail cast on with two hands. Um, somebody else suggested, and thank you so much for this one, somebody else suggested uh, a different way to do the long tail cast on so that you don't have to measure out your yarn. It really is a game changer. It really is. And I'm going to um, link to that down below as well. And also, hold on, let me just, um, yeah, so long, I'm just going to make a note, um, long tail cast on um, link. Okay. I. Uh, Yes, it really is a game changer so that you don't have to um, measure out every single time and then you need 300 stitches and you get to 295. <laughs> and then realize now what? I have to rip this all out and start again. So please, um, the reason I'm saying this is to everybody that's watching um, and following along with this class, please leave comments. And you have been. And I, I'm saying please continue to leave comments below for me if you've got suggestions for things, um, if you've got ideas, there may just be things I'm forgetting to mention or may not remember or may not even be familiar with. So please continue to leave um, your comments and your questions down below for me. Uh, I think I've been pretty good with staying on top of um, answering the questions uh, and staying on top of people's comments. Um, I may not be able to reply to every single comment. There are a lot of you and I am reading them all and it's wonderful, um, but just for the sake of time, I may not be able to 
personally reply to every single message, but they have been read. And if there is a question, um, anyone that has a question, that I, those are the ones I'm definitely um, replying to and adding links and um, if you're requesting something in particular. So this is a classroom setting. It's a very, very large classroom, as I've said. Um, I don't have you right in front of me to answer your questions. Leave them down below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Um, yes, yeah, so now let's talk about going forward. That basically is it. This Again, this is a really, really short one this time. Um, you're just going to continue working on the leg until you get down to the heel. <clears throat> Uh, you can adjust your length if you want to. You can stay where you are. Going forward, what I've decided to do is split the heel into two classes. One, if I try to fit it all into one class, the length of the video itself is going to be extremely long. So I think it makes a little bit more sense. And then to do it one class, we're going to do the heel on two circular needles. That will be one class. And then we're going to do the heel again on magic loop. That will be another class. So that is going to be split up. Depending on what technique you're doing, the magic loopers, I'm not sure which I'm going to do first, but the magic loop or the circular people may have to wait um, for that video to come up. But I think just it's a lot of recording and I don't want to rush through it and I don't want to make myself um, condense it in order to fit it in and then I leave things out. So I think that's a better way to go going forward. Um, and those dates, uh, I actually have dates for you. <laughs> so one class is going to go up on the 22nd, February 22nd, uh, which should be next Saturday. And then the following Saturday, the 29th is going to be the other. I will probably start with the two circular needles um, on the 22nd and then do magic loop on the 22nd. 9th, but don't hold me to it. If time allows, I will try to get them both up um, within the same week, not both on Saturday, but within the same week if possible. But the point is you will have everything ready for you by the 29th of February. So that covers everything there. Um, oh, two recurring questions. So it's the Q&A section now of the class, um, the question and answer section. Somewhat more than one person, many people actually have asked me to change the background color um, while I'm demonstrating a technique. So I'm showing you how to do things on using a white yarn because I think it really helps you to see what's going on. I have tried to demonstrate things in yarn, in colored yarn or variegated or striped and it's a little harder to see exactly which stitch I'm picking up. With this there's no ambiguity, like you'll you'll see it. Um, however, some people are having trouble seeing this against a white background. I absolutely understand that. Um, this board, this right here, is an ironing um, table, an ironing board, a literal board. It's a 24 by 24 uh, square piece of wood that I covered myself. And this is what I've been demonstrating um, over or on. So I just bought fabric today. So I will cover this over. Um, I, I agree. I do think it doesn't bother me and I, it didn't occur to me that it would be an issue for anyone. So I will change the color. And I think it will be a little bit easier for you to see. Um, so that was number one. And number two, the other major recurring question is, when are you going to do two socks at, at once? Two at a time socks. Hmm. So I will do two at a time socks. I don't have a date. Oh no, I'm lying. Um, the tentative date is March 14th for the two at a time sock instructions. I think it makes sense to do them, again, to separate it out, to do two at a time on two circular needles and two at a time magic loop, just for clarity and to shorten the length of the videos. I think it makes more sense to break it out that way, um, but it is coming. It is coming, you all. If you don't want to wait that long, there are many, many tutorials, again, on YouTube. You can go right ahead and have a look at those. I would have sent you out to look at those even whether I had a video up or not because again the way people explain things works better for some and work and others work better for others so if you want to do it now please go ahead again this is a beginner sock knitting class so you can't run before you can walk 
I really want people to understand the basics. And some of you may even find this class today, class three, like, oh, well, what was the point of that? There is a point. So I really want people to go through this slowly and understand. I want to be as clear and concise as I possibly can. That way, once we do get to two circular, to two at a time, um, knitting two socks at a time on two circs or magic loop, you, the question, you'll have a strong foundation so you will be able to understand exactly what I'm doing. I do think that's the way to go. If you don't, or you disagree, or you want it now, again, you can go and do a search and you can keep right on ahead. Um, I encourage you to do that. If you were an adventurous beginner, go right ahead. Have fun. It is really, really fun to do. I just want everybody to understand their basics. Um, yes, yeah, so that answers those two questions. You now have a tentative date. That covers um, questions for this class. I'm trying to just think really quickly if there's anything else, any other major questions. Those have basically been the major questions. Um, the sock needle question's already been answered. Um, all of those other things have been covered. Yeah, so I think that covers it for today. Um, again, a very short class just to get a couple more tidbits out to you. Uh, next week, we will be jumping into the heel. Have your stitch markers ready. Um, removable stitch markers, that's all you need. And a progress keeper. And we will be jumping into the heel next week, you guys. Thank you so much for watching today. I am so happy that you're here. Thank you for following along. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for participating in this class. You are all so, so welcome, and I am so happy that you are here with me. This experience is so wonderful for me, and I hope that it is for you as well. Thank you for joining me again today, and I will see you all again next Saturday. Bye, everybody. Hello everyone. I wasn't going to demonstrate this because I thought my voice would sound a little bit too scratchy, but I definitely still think it's worth showing you. So I apologize for the croaky voice today. I did want to show you what I meant by the difference between measuring and counting your rows. So we are here I have a pair of socks knit from the same yarn, same size needle, one after the other. But now if you look at the socks, you would think that they are the same size, but I'm going to take my time now and measure each one. So I'm gonna pull this one down. We're gonna measure this one first, and I'm going to measure from the toe, the tip of the toe, which is right there. Okay, I'm just gonna hold that in place. So right from the tip of the toe to right where the gusset starts which is right here is measuring seven and three seven and a half is measuring seven and a half on this one now i'm going to show you the same thing on this sock right at the toe holding that in place and i'm going to come all the way out and this one is now measuring seven and three quarters now if i just went by measurements these two socks, granted, that's only a quarter of an inch, but the two socks are measuring different lengths. Now, what I've also seen people do as they're knitting along, and I'm going to show you here, as they're knitting along, sometimes they'll do this and they'll stretch it out. So now all of a sudden we're at eight inches, and I can take this even further. Uh, if we're here, I can take this to almost... Let me measure this out almost seven and an eighth so the point is measuring your sock is not always the way to go now I just want to show you also now I know a lot of you talked about the color so I'm just gonna put a cloth down so that you can see okay so here is a cloth just so you can see what I mean okay now Hopefully this is going to be the color that I'm going to be using going forward. So hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit clearer the white sock against the dark background. Now I'm going to take this. So now if I'm not counting my rows, this is my magic loop sock. If I'm not counting and I'm just going to go by measuring, I want to know 
the distance between the end of the cuff, which is right here, and where the stitches are on the needle. So I'm going to put here, let's measure it this way, it's a little easier to see. So I'm right at the edge and I'm going to measure here. Now, do you see how there's a bowing in the needle? That's just the nature of the needle. Now that is measuring at um, one and a quarter. So now if I go here a little bit over to the edge, this is measuring an inch only. Do you see the difference? But now how many people are really going to feel comfortable taking the stitching off the needles, put it on a thread, and measure it that way? This is stretching. The nature of knit fabric is to stretch. The only way to guarantee that your socks are going to match, I'll bring this one back out, the only way to guarantee that your socks are going to match is if you count your rows. It may be tedious, but as I said in the video, it will definitely, as I said in the class, it will definitely be to your advantage to learn how to read your stitches, okay? And we're gonna go into that a little bit later, but you want to learn how to read your stitches. I'm gonna go under a stitch right here, and you're going to count these, just the counting the Vs, and once you get to, let's say, 10, you can place a marker, then another 10 and place a marker. You can place them so that they're all hanging off your knitting, or you can place them, place a marker, a pro, I'm sorry, a progress keeper, that's what I meant to say. You can place a progress keeper and move it up with you every 10, 15, 20 rounds, whatever suits you. So that is the difference. Just wanted to demonstrate, again, the nature of knit fabric is to stretch. I just wanted to demonstrate measuring your fabric to see the difference between measuring and counting.